In this video, I will show you how to take a cut, a simple cut that's very boring, and create a professional transition just like this. Notice, it's very beautiful. Now, what's good about these transitions is that they are very portable. You can put them on any cut, and they are very easy to create, and you have a ton of effects that you can apply to create these transitions. Notice, guys, there is nothing on the layer. The layer has no animation at all. It's just this uh, composition that's creating this kind of transition here. And that is something you want to learn and it's very professional later on. I use rotation and zoom and stories and distortion. You can use any kind of effects. You can pan it left, right, center, whatever you like. These transitions and uh, this uh, animation that you can see all over here are part of my courses on Udemy and Skillshare. You can check my profile to see them. But in the course, I will add a ton of tips and tricks and how to get them done even faster than what I'm showing you here. And let's start creating our transition. We come to the cut. Okay, we have a perfect cut over here and you create a new adjustment layer as simple as this. You want to change the timing for the adjustment layer is very long. You come to duration from here and you say 30. And if you select current frame, it's going to adjust the side according to the playhead. This is the current frame. You click OK. It's a bit proportional and it works for me here because I want 10 frames on this side and 20 frames on the other side. Now you need to split the layer. You're splitting the layer because you want the first piece to be the outer transition for the layer below and the second piece to be the in transition for the layer below also. Before we start animating, let's rename them. So that is transition out and the one above will be transition in. So we are transitioning out this layer, transitioning in this layer, and we are going to start our animation here. If I zoom in, the first effect I will use, of course, I have adjustment layers that will be the transform. I will take the transform and drop it on the layer, it's already there. And within the transform here, I can start the animation. If you notice, if I take the scale down or up, you know, it's working on the layer, I can rotate it left and right. So let's create our animation. I will keyframe the scale and the rotation. Come at the exit, that's O. Put the scale at 200 and the rotation at 180. So it's upside down. That's fine, but if you notice, it's not nice because of these gaps on the top, bottom, left, right. To overcome this, there is a nice effect that is called the motion tile. And you take the motion tile and drop it under. Now, motion tile does not work properly when it is on the bottom. It has a big ego. It wants always to be on top. And actually, all you want to do is to output width. That's the width here. You can make it 250, for example, the height 250. And it's, it has covered the gaps, but it's not very nice. What you do is to mirror the edge, and now it's much nicer. So now you have a simple animation. I will put the beginning and end for the work area. And if you play, you have a simple animation. The nice thing about this animation is always have the motion blur on and look at the effect. Notice the motion blur taking effect on the adjustment layers, not on the layers themselves. Actually, the layers are not moving from here. It's the adjustment layer that has the animation. So that's very nice, but I always like to add more. And there is an awesome effect I want to show you that really gives some kind of distortion. It is the optic compensation. This guy has no ego. It can sit anywhere. And notice if you hack the optics here, the field of view, notice what's happening. That's very cool. If you reverse it now, it's really cooler. So I usually use it, I use it on values of 120 to 200, something like this. I'm going to keyframe it, put the value at zero, of course, go to the out point and put the value at 140. I have quite some distortion here. Nice. You should be very careful that you need to work on the speed. So that will be F9. Select the scale and the rotation. I will come over here. So what I would like them is to start slowly and end very fast. So I'm going to do that. And I will select both of these and go do something like this. So they're going to start slowly, notice, and end up very fast. Quite awesome with the motion blur. Let's take the field of view here. And it's going to do the same. It's going to end up very fast. And let's do something like this. Slow and fast. Remember that? That's a very important technique here. Actually, we have taken out the first layer. Now, let's bring in the second layer. Let's add, first of all, the motion tile. 
Now, I don't advise you to copy paste the effects because you will have a lot of adjustment to do. And then we have the transform. We add the transform. You can go for optics. You can choose also other ones like the bulge. The bulge will do well here. You can add the bulge. Of course, you can add the bulge and the optics. So now the concept here, you're going to start big values and end up with nil values. So it settles. So motion tile here should be, I don't know, 250 will do. I think so. We mirror the edges. We keyframe the scale at 200. Notice this is the high value. We keyframe the rotation. And we're going to start from 180 because we ended on 180. And the bulge here, notice if I bulge it, you are bulging only this small circle. So what you do, you make it a bit bigger than the composition. 1150 will always work very right. So this is the bulge effect. Notice if I take it to zero. Okay. And positive value. You can have also negative value. I'm going to go negative. It depends on you what you want to do and how you want it. I prefer high value. So I'm going to take it, for example, to two point. I don't know. Two will do well. Of course, I want to keyframe it. So I keyframe the bulge height. If I see my keyframes, that's okay. I will go to the out point over here and return the values to the normal values. Now, there's something about the rotation here. If you put zero here, that will be fine, but it's going to rotate anti-clockwise. So what you do, you add another 180 or actually you need a full rotation. So it settles rotating clockwise like the rest. And the bar should put it back to zero. And we don't forget to select all of them and go to F9 and come back to the graph here. Let's select, uh, in this case here, it's not going to work. So I'm going to deselect and I'm going to work them one by one. So I'm going to start big values and set it just like this. And then for the rotation, same story, big values to start with big values and settle it very nicely. I think this is okay, fine. Make sure you're not going up and down with the rotation. And the bulge effect, that's the same. I want to start very high. Okay, so the value is very high. Start very fast, goes down and settles. Let's go back and play our animation and see if I've done a good job. And here you are, you have a very nice transition and it's an awesome transition. Of course, guys, you know, I used here three keyframes with the scale rotation and the transform and the optics and here the bulge, but you can go ahead and explore all kinds of distort effects, skew, whatever you like. Fine. How do I use this is the most important here. Possibly I'm not going to duplicate these layers all over the place. I will, of course, pre-compose. I'm going to call it transitions. And make sure that you move all attribute and you check this guy. So you have the new pre-comp, the combined length of these two layers. If I click OK. So here I have the composition exactly the size of the two layers. But notice it does not work. That's because you need to collapse the transformations for this composition. Collapsing transformation, you can think about it like the layers within these compositions are brought in here, but not physically. Just <laughs> to work with. And then they affect and become really adjustment layers. Here you are. You have done it. What I like to do is to come to the middle here, make sure I'm really on the cut. That's fine. Select the layer, press the star on the numerical keyboard. So I add a marker and I click here. I say cut. Actually, I don't do that. I can remember them well, but uh, if you are starting, that's cool to do. Cool. So we have our first cut. And if you come to the project, we have our transition. You can take this layer and duplicate it. Of course, I have it in my project panel now. I can take it to another project and just make sure that I just position it over here. I zoom in a bit, make sure I'm doing the right thing. I hope it will stick. It's stuck. Let's come back here and let's play. By the way, guys, this is part of a course on Udemy and Skillshare, I think. And if you want to say, check my profile and you can have the course and learn all these kinds of animation plus these transitions. So this is how to create professional, very portable transitions. And I hope you enjoyed it. Think about giving me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. You can get all the updates.